I personally thought about climbing on the airport wall for probably 10 or more years ever since I sort of stared up at it and thought, oh, it'd be neat to hang on my portal edge one day on the top of this cliff. Daniel Joel. I'm a climber based out of Queenstown. I first started climbing in the Darren Mountains oh, a little over 20 years ago. I think I remember my first trip coming here and just being terrified. Like there, a lot of the more modern climbs in Fiordland have probably a little bit more protection, a few more bolts. And I think if you went back 20 or 30 years, that probably wasn't the case and it was much more traditional. You had a lot more run out slab climbing really. And yeah, I remember leaving Fiordland after that trip and just thinking, I really needed to go away and improve my rock climbing before I could come back and do anything, any of the larger climbs or peaks here. The very first time I ever went to Milford, I looked at Airport Wall and I was like, how come there's no climbing up there? Look at those awesome looking crags. Um, and that was probably about 20 years ago. I guess due to COVID really, I was in Queenstown with Mary and after the first lockdown we went out and climbed at Copper Point and we put up a shorter, maybe you know, 200 metre long route out of the field there. On our way back on the boat we are looking at airport wall and we are like, let's do it. Let's just do it. And Dan has the impeccable drive that Dan has, the, the force, and uh, he was like, okay, let's get a track and start having a look straight away, otherwise we're never gonna get there. Progressively, little by little, we carried in gear, we got our ropes in place, dropped off all the food and the things that we'd want to start working on the wall, and then pretty much every fine spell for almost three months, we just came to Fiordland and climbed on the airport wall. So it's Milford, it's one of the wettest places in the world. But it has good weather windows and good weather breaks. But you need to be ready to go and make use of those weather windows. It was getting into winter, basically, like definitely autumn when we started. Um, things were getting cold elsewhere, but airport wall was north facing. Dan's working hard, Mary's hardly working. And looked appealing. There's usually several steps in the progression of a route like this, and the first step is just getting to the top of it. So. Over, I think it took us 16 days, we got to the top of the wall. And then once we'd got to the top of the wall, we set about figuring out how to free climb it, which is to climb it without falling off. So you're still using a rope, but you're trying to do each section of the climb without taking any falls. And that probably took us another 16 to 20 days to get it in that shape or get ourselves in the right level of fitness to do that. And then the third step in a progression of these kind of climbs is to climb it in a day. And so that's where you climb all of the pitches of the route without falling off, and you do that in less than 24 hours. So that then took another 15 to 20 odd days of practicing. And I guess that's for me the kind of progression that I quite enjoy in big wall climbing. The general way most routes are put up these days are uh, from the top down. You would abseil down and pre-inspect things, clean things, bolt things going down. But we committed to going ground up. Um, it's just a lot more adventure and going ground up. It's also a lot, a lot more hard work. Your nut tool is integral for cleaning 
Not for taking out nuts, but for cleaning cracks. We would climb with a brush on us as well. Often you'd just be cleaning holds before you even get to hold them. When you go ground up, you don't know what you're coming at next. You know, you can have sort of look up ahead and get an idea of what's going on, but you don't know if there's going to be holes up there or not. Nice work, Steve. You don't know if that wall's going to blank out or if you're going to get gear up there or if you're going to have to keep climbing for a while longer before you get gear. It's choose your own adventure in a way, but when you're climbing it as well, at least you are. You're actually climbing it and getting to hold everything and feel everything and be in the movement when you then go to put in a bolt or something. Woo! The drill's quite heavy and all the gear's heavy, the hammer's heavy, and the heavier you are, the harder it is to climb. So you try and strip all those things off your harness to make you light, and then you don't necessarily have all the things that you need to help you attach yourself to the wall. So there's like a fine balance of how tired you're gonna get with all the weight and how light you can make your harness so you can actually climb well. You're looking for the most natural line anyway, where you can get by with placing the least bolts as possible and climbing as much on trad as you can. The reality is of putting up these long kind of complex routes is they're just a heap of work. So it's quite brutal and often just a single pitch of climbing if you're placing a, a bunch of bolts on it can take anywhere up to six or eight hours to finish. Some pitches were just in, intense, they, they drained you, yeah, physically and mentally. They were long days up there and there's no going home, you're going back to the bivvy late, tired, covered in dust <laughs> and, and moss and everything and then just wash your eyes and get up in the morning and start again. I've been climbing with Mary now for oh, well over 10 years, maybe 15 years. We've done some climbing in North America together. We've also climbed in, in the Alps together in Chamonix. And then more recently, when we both found ourselves in New Zealand, thanks to COVID, we spent this last year climbing together a lot. Yeah, it's always fun. Mary's got a good attitude, good work ethic. He's happy to put in a big day's work on the wall. And he's a very good climber, like beautiful technique. He's lovely to watch. There's a, a nice traverse that comes out of the Coro Club. And then after that pitch, there's a 40, 50 metre overhanging section of reasonably difficult climbing, like grade 25, complex kind of trade climbing. And I think Mary was figuring that pitch out for an entire day. I think it was like seven or eight hours I'd be late in front of it. And the top of it. Nice work, Mary. He's a few metres above his last bit of gear and he's like shaking out, like tired, like he'd been on lead all day and still had the courage to like throw for the final hold and he missed it and took a big whip it. <laughs> well done. But he's that kind of climber. Yeah, he's committed to the style. He likes to do things in a way that challenges himself. And yeah, for me, that's a fantastic partner. It's hard to define what a big wall is, but basically I think of a big wall as something that the average climber would take more than one day to climb where they need to sleep on it. It's gonna involve at least one night, maybe two nights. And you might have to haul a bag, you're gonna to need to take your food and water and gear with you. We have some long climbs in the mountains, but often they're a little bit easier, maybe more slabby. You can usually get up them in a day without too much thought. We were looking to try and create what we thought of as a real big wall climb, which was a long climb, technically difficult. And if you want to climb it in a day, it's gonna require a bit of work.
it's like a big version of Half Dome in Yosemite, I, I think of it as it's, you know, a little bit more difficult than climbing the northwest face of Half Dome, but it's easier than doing a route like Freerider or the Nose on El Capitan. It's also got a very short approach, which is quite different to the rest of New Zealand, like larger walls. For the airport wall, you walk for 45 minutes and you're on the flat, you walk across, across the river, go around Deepwater Basin, you're at the start of the wall. It's about 700 metres of climbing, 22 pitches, uh, grade 27, um, free climbing grade. It's probably more difficult in aiding than a lot of the routes on El Cap or on Half Tone. Um, in the way of location, it's just like a hundred times better. <laughs> like, I mean, you're looking out of this beautiful sound and just, a, yeah, just stunning scenery. And you don't have the madness and chaos of Yosemite Village underneath you. This has like a jungle feel to it, a jungle above a fjord. Welcome to the tree house. Room with a view. This wall will give you a lot of experience um, and stuff that you've never experienced before. You need to build your skills repertoire a lot, especially if you're actually trying to aid climb that as well. If you're free climbing it, it, again, there's another mental aspect to it that you won't ever get in the gym or on most crags. I'll chuck a couple here, Jules, just before we get into the crux. a lot more exposure. And you get that exposure pretty early on in this wall, actually. Probably on the third, fourth pitch, you're 150 metres or so already above the sea in this overhanging space. Most people aren't accustomed to that exposure and it plays with your head at times. And for other people, it plays with your head in good ways. Yeah, some people like that exposure. It's awesome. Thanks to Dan. Dan put in massive effort on this and it was his drive which kept this ticking away. Yeah, he had good vision for getting a line like this and for future generations as well. It's really good. It's really cool to have this big wall style climb in New Zealand. On the first ascent of the airport wall, day 14 on the route. 14, that was a long haul flight. <laughs> Dan had a great smile on his face when we finished that climb. I haven't seen a smile on Dan's face like that in ages. Here we go, 
Day 14, Woo. top of the airport wall. Fuck yeah. Done. So stoked. <laughs> <laughs> he was smiling quite a bit on this wall actually. He was really quite happy. Um, and to see that smile when he topped out was, yeah, was fantastic. I think in total we estimated something like 100 man-hour days of climbing went into just producing that one climb. And now that that's done, it gets a lot easier to establish the other climbs around it. But initially, that's a heap of work that goes into it, and it doesn't happen without a lot of like friends who are also interested in the idea and want to come and see what it's like. And what are your least favourite things about climbing at the airport while? I don't have any of that. <laughs>